Hello, it's day number, well, we're actually revisiting day number 228 of 365 Days of Awesome, Celebrate Success Through Service. And we are in blue together. I am actually here to honor our service hero, my dear friend with the hat, Angelique Jackson. Yes. Hello. She, you know, hello. Let me just brag about you a minute. Okay. You... <laughs> You have a story that I am so excited to share. Um, and, and we are actually doing this a second time because we had some technical issues before. Mm -hmm. And, and I think I actually believe that the reason we had those is because your story is so inspirational that sometimes, you know, things kind of get in the way when you need to get that message out there. And yeah. we are just, we're not going to, we're not going to let that happen. And so thank <laughs> you. I know you're at an event that's going to start in a little while and, and yet you agreed to share your story and be honored at this as the service hero that you are. Thank you so very much. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> well, you know, I I'm I'm thrilled because of the fact that we we got to know each other and meet each other at the city summit, right? Right. And and there was just something about it when we started talking that day that that we had so many things in common. And and I, I just felt like this kinmanship with you. And let's just go into it. You have a unique okay. story, don't you? I do. I mean, I have a story that's unique and that's my own. I think we all from, we all have our individual stories. There's some mm -hmm. similarities across the, the field, but our stories are our own. So yeah, I do have my own unique story. <laughs> And, and why don't you tell us about it? Because, you know, you, you, you had everything going for you, you know, you, right. But, but it took you a while to get there. And so you were able to, you were raised in an environment where you had like this amazing gift of a person that let you know that anything was possible. Right. Right. My grandmother was definitely someone who was a gift to me. She was my inspiration. She still is my inspiration. She was someone who uh, instilled a lot of my my own guiding principles, my foundational principles that I believe in, and just my confidence and my faith in myself um, mm -hmm. came from her, stemmed from her. I mean, my environment, the environment around me wasn't all that great. I mean, we were not um, in the best of neighborhoods, grew up, you know, not being wealthy, not well off or anything like that. But she always had a way of making us feel like we had everything that we needed mm -hmm. and just giving us that that light to really see life a different way, to see mm -hmm. the abundance that life has to offer. So she she is and always will be my inspiration. <laughs> you know, and and I think that, you know, I actually thought about this uh, later and, and thinking, you know, that even again is something unique because to have someone in your family like that, because I, I also, I, both of my grandparents, my grandparents to me were just like my guiding stars. And oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, it's a it's it's relevant in some families and it's current in some families and in other families it's like it just no longer is and and i i love the fact that you were raised by your grandmother and you were telling me before that she had a way of making things fun and and letting yeah. you know that all things were possible right mm -hmm. no she most definitely did I mean, she was someone who, when you walked in the room, the whole room lit up because she walked in. And when she walked in, she had this confidence and she just had this love for life. She used to, um, when I was a kid, she used to always say, I can outrun any of you youngsters. Then 
<laughs> and she would race us down the street and just and, and literally beat us. <laughs> we we would be out of breath. And she's like, okay, let's do number two, round two. We're like, wait, <laughs> let us get our breath first. <laughs> and we were in elementary school. So she just had a way of enjoying life to the fullest. And she wanted everyone around her to enjoy life to the fullest. You know, that, that right there, um, is 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 see just a minute i'm just doing something here making sure everything's good um, okay. <laughs> that, you know because we had some technical We're issues good. guys <laughs> you know there and, and i still am having a few and uh, with okay. all, everything so i'm trying to like uh in fact if anybody is it, watching this right now what i would like to be not if i for those that are watching, because right. I see that we are getting some hearts and thumbs ups and everything, but I would Hi. love to be Hi, everyone. <laughs> yes, please um, uh, do hashtag live or hashtag replay so that we can track because, you know, I do go live at different times in the day and I'm trying to see if I'm ever going to standardize that. I don't know, but I do you know, <laughs> look at these things. So, all right. Um, so you you were raised in an area you were just sharing that mm -hmm. that was maybe um, a little challenged. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, uh, we have uh, Mikey Adam Cohen, Hi, Mikey, <laughs> one of my very dearest dearest of friends, and um, uh, thank you for being here. Thank um, you. You, <laughs> you were raised in an area that, like you were saying, it was challenged economically mm -hmm. it was challenged right. even socially but your grandmother had a way you were sharing and i love this she because my mother did this at different times too in our lives she would mm -hmm. take you on field trips right she was she, <laughs> she would do my grandmother she's she was the most adorable thing but she was a self-proclaimed junk lady so she would take us um in her white van and like get up at four o'clock in the morning and she would say, okay, who wants to go? And I would be the only one who wanted to go because I was that special type of child. <laughs> Little <girl. laughs> I, I wanted it. to go everywhere. But um, we would get in her van and we would drive out to Bel Air and Beverly Hills and um, Pacific Palisades. And she would drive down the coast of PCH and just to take us out of the environment that we're in and she would always say baby girl there are so many things in this world beyond what you see right now this is not your only reality you can go out and make the reality that you want to have because there's a whole world out there waiting for you to explore it and she said so never limit yourself to just this area go out there and really live life and she would show us she would show us all the different homes and the different um just that we could do anything. We can live the life that we of our choosing. She and she would say, they're no different than you are. The only difference is that they made up their mind to decide that that was the life that they wanted to live. That is awesome. I, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna stop for a second right now because I wanna make sure we're still okay. Mikey, okay. can you please leave a comment right now and let us know that we are live because I keep checking my phone because I wanna make sure that's what happened last time is that we ended okay. up having a problem. I just want to make sure that we are live. Um, so if you could do that, Mikey, I would appreciate it. Um, okay. So we're going to go forward like, because it looks like it looks good in my screen and I'm okay. just going to not overthink it right this minute until we hear yes. from them. Um, <clears throat> so it you get on mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, which, I'm thrilled with, I'm going with, let's wink, wink, guys. You know, we're, we're going with this really, you know, positive thinking. Yes. So you, you went to school, you, 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 you know, I'm going to fast forward. You actually went to school and then you were able to go out there and live that life that your grandmother shared with you. You were the one that showed up early in the morning to go in that white van. Oh, <laughs> and you were the one that worked hard. Okay, good. He's letting us know we are live. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Yes, so, so 
fast forwarding, um, you know, going through life, going through different aspects and different tr- struggles and different challenges, it never stopped me from knowing that I can continue to go ahead and move forward. So I did, um, well, I didn't go to college right out of high school. I got married and had kids right out of high school. Oh, that's right. And, that's right. Yes, I, I had got married and had kids right out of high school. My ex-husband was in the military. He was in the Air Force. So I traveled with him lived wherever he, um, whichever base he lived on. And um, I was a hairstylist for a long time. So I started off being a cosmetologist. And what happened was I knew that there was more that I wanted to do. So I became a co-owner in a hair salon found out very quickly, I had no idea of what I was doing in business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I knew hair and that I thought that's all I needed to know. It's like, I know hair, I have clients, they have clients, we know hair, we can do this, we can run this business. But then there was a whole new world that opened up to me that I was a little unaware of. So I started doing research and I started um, going out there. I mean, subsequently we did not have the salon any longer. My ex-husband got out of the military, moved forward to that, and I decided that I wanted to work for one of the major manufacturers. I had it in my mind I was going to work for L'Oreal. That's all there was to it. But L'Oreal didn't want me at that time. (laughs) It was mainly because I didn't have that degree. And so that's when I said, okay, here I am. I'm married. I have all of these certifications. Um, from doing hair. I I was certified. I did hair shows. I was one of the premier stylists. I had clients, celebrity clients. I just, I did very well in that, in that arena. But then um, to have L'Oreal said, no, we don't want to hire you as our brand manager. I was a little hurt. (laughs) And so I asked, I said, well, why, why not? And they said, because you don't have the educational component. And I said, no, I do have the education. I have my licenses. They said, no, we need you to have the education in terms of business and marketing. You have to understand how our business run. And then that's when I said, okay, I went home, told my um, my ex-husband, I said, I'm going to college. (laughs) And there it was. We had two kids. And he said, well, how are we going to do that? You know, you you're you have uh, you're working full time. What are you going to do? And this is how the universe works. And that's why I'm a firm believer in the signs of the universe. And when you put things out there, you manifest it. I literally opened up the yellow book. Yes, the yellow pages. So I'm dating myself a little bit. That's okay. I, I, I worked with them. I recruited okay. them. I didn't have a computer when I first started way back in the day. Wink, wink. Yeah, wink, wink. So I literally opened the yellow page. And when I opened the yellow page, the first page that came up, there was an ad that said Weekend College, Woodbury University um, for adult students. And I looked at that. I was like, Weekend College? What the heck is Weekend College? So... Fast forwarding, I went ahead, I called, I went and interviewed, waited to get the acceptance letter, got the acceptance letter, and um, the same day I found out I was pregnant with my third child. (laughs) So here I was, I'm like, okay, we have a third one on the way and this one. And in the meantime, everyone else was saying, well, why are you trying to go into college right now? You're in your early, your late 20s or early 30s. You have a family. You are already working full time. How are you going to do that? And I just said, I'm going to do it. They said, well, you should start off slow. I didn't know the definition of the meaning for starting off slow. I always jumped in head first. That's why I love you. (laughs) I, you know, <laughs> right there. And it's like, okay, I'll figure it out as I go. <laughs> <You're> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I was one of those persons that literally said, I'll jump and discover my wings along the way. <laughs> right. So right. I went ahead. And when I got the acceptance letter, I enrolled, went to school full time, went in with no credits. This was Woodbury University in Burbank, no credits whatsoever, no community college, none of those things starting from scratch. Wobbled in my first year of college, being pregnant with my third child, did very well in my classes. Um, Fast forward four years later, I earned my marketing degree, graduated at the top of my class, marched myself back over to L'Oreal and some of the other hair care manufacturers I wanted to work for and, and applied and said, now, <laughs> <laughs> I, love I have the bachelor's degree in marketing. 
so now what? Um, and so L'Oreal did not hire me at that time, but another company did hire me. And that company was a professional hair care distributor. They hired me as their regional sales manager. And I was right after I, I was finished with my bachelor's, I went right into my MBA program. And so while I was doing my MBA, they hired me. I was in my tail end of my MBA, they hired me. And then I moved to Vegas, became their regional sales manager. About a year later. Uh oh. All right, let's see what's going on, guys. So. The, you, did you hear you what I said? For a second. So we missed what okay. you were saying, but we're still live. So what it was, yeah. So what happened was that um, as soon as I started working for this professional hair care distributor, they were called Mailey's, um, and they were a professional hair care distributor. Um, a year later, after I started working there, L'Oreal bought them out. So my goal of working for L'Oreal. I did not know this from last time. I know. <laughs> Exactly. This is this is how the universe works. <laughs> this is how you manifest when you have it in your mindset, because I used to carry my one year, my five year, my 10 year goal in my purse. And I had on there, I will work for L'Oreal. I will earn my I will complete my bachelor's degree, complete my master's degree. I will uh, open up more businesses. I will write a book. I will do all these things. So I kept that in my purse. Every day that I opened my wallet, those goals were right there. So nothing, I already knew I was going to work for L'Oreal. I didn't know the how, but I knew I would. So although they didn't take me initially when I hired, when I uh, applied full on, they still, I still ended up working for them in the long run. So as that's the universe working in your favor. That's manifesting exactly what it is that you want. That is incredible. You know, I, I want to just say that Mikey is telling us that we're having a delay. So I want to, uh, because, it, and it's really interesting because I haven't been having it. I think that it, it, it has, there's something in the energy here because it's like, okay, we've got to make sure that your show really does go forward because there's a story here that I, I know people are supposed to hear. Okay. Um, Mark, can you tell me if we're if it's still delayed or if we're okay? Um, thank you for watching with us and, and helping me thank right you. now. <laughs> you know what? We're going to go forward. I wanted to share this one picture and then and then go forward. But this was the picture of that you shared, right? Of uh, and I'm thinking. You know, of I'm seeing the girl. I'm sure it might not be. I'm not sure if you were that age when you would go in the white van, but you know, it oh, was like my baby. My baby. <laughs> I love it. It's just so adorable. I had to. I had to share it when I was looking at the pictures. Yes. Okay, so you you're you're at the top of the game. You end up really doing well, right? You you put it out there. You're doing this. You're you're living very comfortably beautiful home the whole thing and then what happens because I, I want to be able to get to the right. story so fast forwarding it to um 2012 i was working for a different company at that time but fast forward to 2012 i was in a car accident and in that car accident what happened was that um, I was having a lot of pain. I didn't know what was going on, but I was experiencing pain and things before then. And I just kind of ignored it because life goes on because in my mind, I'm like, I have to provide, I'm doing, I have to do for my family. Because by this time I was a single parent. I had gone through divorce and I was raising the three kids on my own. And then, so fast forwarding, discovering this, I went to the hospital emergency care and they discovered that I had cervical cancer and multiple uterine fibroids. Now, <laughs> you were telling me before that you had signs when you were working and doing all of this and, and you were yeah. at the top of the game, you were concentrating, you're, you're so focused on being, you know, the, the region and you yes. had numbers to hit, you had all these things, but your yes. body was telling you that you were having problems, right? Yes. 
my body was telling me, my body was speaking to me, but I didn't recognize the signs. I didn't understand because you grow up and you, you think to yourself, okay, I have to do this. I have a little brain. Right. Okay, I'll pop a pill or I'll take an aspirin or I'll go to sleep or it'll go away. And then it becomes almost like it's a part of you. You get used right. to it and then you, you just don't do anything about it. But I was so focused because I was busy traveling my region at that time. I had 13 states. I had all the southern states. I was traveling 15 to 20 days out of the month. I was constantly on the go, constantly, constantly on the go. But I neglected my own self-care. I neglected the signs that were um, being told to that my body was trying to tell me. And that accident and then finding all those things out is when it all became very clear to me because I was so focused on that one area of my life being successful in business that I stopped paying attention to my spiritual self. I stopped paying attention to my um, self-care, my well-being, my health, and just when and just kept moving and grinding on being successful. <laughs> right, right, right. And because we we're kind of like almost in a way when you're when you're that kind of a person and and you're driven and you you have those goals you you know what you want it's like you said you carry it around with you your your goal for this your goal for that and you're you're able to tick it off because you were not just writing it or wishing it you were not dreaming about it you were doing it yes. however in doing it you were not completely listening to yourself and it took a car accident yes. for you to be in the emergency room. And I'm going to, I'm going to show, and now if anybody is watching this and, and has a weak stomach, I just want you to know, I'm going to be showing something here in a few moments that I, I, I'm, you know, you want to see, but I'm just giving a moment's time. So you were in the emergency room. I know that this picture is maybe not that particular time, but I'm, I'm telling the, we're telling their story. So mm -hmm. you end up finding out that you have to have surgery and mm -hmm. they end up doing what? Removing what? Well, they did. I had to have surgery, but my price and my biggest concern, they wanted me to have a, a, a hysterectomy. I didn't right. want to have that. I was right. so emotionally like, no, I don't want to get rid of, I don't want anyone removing my womb. That's my, that's my, the essence of my womanhood, of my femininity. And that's, that was what my mindset was at that time, was thinking that removing that meant that I would be broken. It meant that I would be somehow not the same person that I was. But, um, and then my mindset was, let's deal with the cervical cancer first. And, and before it progresses, because I was fortunate, and I say this all, I was very fortunate that that car accident happened because it caught me at such an early stage that all I, I only had to go through uh, internal radiation treatment. I didn't have to do the chemo and uh, things like that. And then we did a, like a myomectomy, like where they just kind of freeze it and did just a basic surgery. And I didn't have that much downtime. So it was, once that was done, once uh, we knew that it, was, it didn't progress into my uterus, it didn't progress into other aspects, and it was gone, that's when I just said, okay, well, then I don't have to have a hysterectomy because it looked like the two, the fibroid tumors had shrunk. And they did. They had shrunk a little bit. But and then? I, so in my mind, I was like, okay, it's there. So it's right. kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I'm going to push it over here. I'm not going to worry about it because it's not giving me any trouble. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> right. If it's but, not bothering me, I'm not going to bother it. That was what my mindset was at that time. Let me get mm -hmm. back on the grind and get back to building this legacy for my family. And then your body decided to, I'm showing the, the large, um, mass that was taken so, so they in, they so the story continues and yeah. your body just kept kept going my body right kept telling me my body kept telling me um but the, the crazy thing is because during that time of going through the cancer treatment i had lost my job i lost my home i lost my car i lost everything ended up homeless for a little while and it took a year to get back on my feet 
to be able to start that working again. It took a substantial pay cut. I mean, I went from making six figures to half the, not even half of what I was making before. Mm -hmm. But I did it because I knew that I had to keep going. Right. Keep going. And then my body again was telling me, but by this time I started listening to my body. I started listening. And then I said, let me change my um, diet. Let me change the way that I work out. Let me start working out more often than what I was doing. I got back into my spiritual practice, got back into a little bit more of self-care and understanding. But then that, that one tumor just kept growing and it started creating right. Of complications because one was pressing up against my uterus, I mean, my bladder. The other one was literally protruding from my abdomen, my lower abdomen, and it was so large. You can see it. Yeah. You lay down, you can feel it if you touch my stomach. And so my doctor said, sat me down and said, I understand you are a strong woman, but you can yeah. be as strong as you want, but this is it's time for you to do something. Otherwise, you're going to have other issues that you don't want to to deal with. And so we sat down and I really had to go through this emotional and just mental talk with myself. Mm -hmm. And I was so fortunate at this time because now, because of my journey, my mindset has shifted. My mindset started to looking at life and, and looking at things in a different perspective. Although it was emotional, I have to say to myself, that my universe doesn't define this. I define it. Right. So I'm not losing something because that energy, that essence of who I am is always here. Right. Because my body is just my vessel, but my soul is, is still intact. So having that surgery just preserves this, my physical form. And I was able to just go ahead and do it. So had the surgery recovered, recovered very well, feel so grateful now. <laughs> I am so grateful for it because um, so many of the things that I was going through the All right, we just, I'm sure she's gonna be back live in a second here. Um, and as we're waiting for this, for some reason, we're having problems with this, stream however the story is and what i get from okay you're back okay yeah. okay so you were sharing that that this experience has given you kind of where you're going where you're going now and yeah. i want to bring up the other day you had just completed this wonderful beautiful i love the beast pictures i want to go on one of these this is what you call this a go inspiration ahead hike. A inspiration hike can you yeah. explain what that is because i literally i i i am going to go on one someday because yes. i love, I love both of you. yes so inspiration hikes what that is is it's hiking because it's that physical activity that our body needs but it's also connecting us with nature, it's connecting us with positive energy of like-minded individuals around us. What we do is we start off in a circle of gratitude. We talk about the things that we're most grateful for. We talk about the positive aspects of life. We look around and we really set an intention for what we're going to do along this path as we're walking um, and hiking, whichever hiking trail it may be. Um, and then I'm talking with, with my uh, whoever's on the hike. We talk with each other. We take pictures. And I let them know, just be in nature. Just be present in this moment in time. Let go of everything else. Leave that behind. Right now is about you. It's about your well-being. This is your self-care, not only for your mind, but your body and your spirit as well. Because when you make that type of connection with individuals that are like you, and that connection with the nature around us, there's something that happens once you're done. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the hike, I tell them, I said, now, all of those limiting things, I want you to write three things down that you have said negative about yourself. Write it down. Now we're going to tear it up. It's no longer a factor. You are a new person. You are now reborn into 
person that you are desiring to be, that you are striving to be, that you are moving forward, that you are becoming, because what's already there is that you are aligning now with your true self. I just love that. I, I, I mean, I can just feel the ocean spray as you're, you know, when I was looking at that picture and I'm just thinking about this, just connecting with, with, with nature and with yourself and your spirit and, and having it guided like that is so beautiful. And, and this is one of the things I really wanted to share is that you got here in a way that if you had continued with, with the corporate life, in a regional situation and you had gone back to it and your body just was telling you, you know, I, we, we got to start taking care of ourselves. And you, you, you had that warning and then you went out there and you had to adjust, but it was like, okay, the body said, uh, uh, and our bodies have a way of doing that when, when we, And we need to start listening to that. And that was one of the messages that I get from you because you learn that. And so now you do these guided, you know, uh, wonderful walks and you Mm -hmm. do it there by the ocean and and you do some in other areas too, right? Yeah. So sometimes we're in the mountains and the hills. There's so many great hiking trails in, uh, in Southern California. There's just so many. My goal is to do um, destination hikes across the nation um, just so that we can commune with nature and be able to do those things. Because sometimes on our hikes, we'll sit down and meditate and just meditate in the, and be present in that moment. Because if our spirit um, guides us to do that, we just sit down in the middle of our hike and say, let's just meditate. Let's soak this in. Let's really release everything. Because then they come out, we come out so much better. We come out... Um, really aligned with our higher self. And that's what I love most is bringing people into alignment with their greater, with the greatest version of who they are. We already know, our bodies know, our minds, our spirit is already there. Our greatness is already there because we were born from greatness into greatness to be greatness. So with that, all we have to do is align with it. That's it. Just a lot of it. Shift our mindset, shift our perspective, shift the way that we live our life, and the whole world opens up to you. So you are now out there teaching others. You're speaking. You're an author. Yes. You uh, you are helping so many people to help them to find that their alignment. Yes. And, and and again, I'm good because I have a nonprofit that supports people that are affected by cancer, guys. You yes. know, this is an important message because for us to hear that, you know, we can actually get in alignment. And if we're having those aches and pains and if we're having those those issues, we need to figure that out. We need to mm-hmm. listen. We need to meditate. We need to work on it, address it. And yes. then you're sharing that there's just so much hope and yeah. that you can go then in a new direction mm-hmm. and the directions that you want to go in your life. And you're helping people to do that, aren't you? Yes, I am. So I am. I do total life transformation. So because I used to focus on one aspect of my life, with it be a career or whatever it may have been, now I look at the whole life because I realize that. You can't be in alignment if you're in chaos in certain areas. You cannot be in complete alignment with who you are if you're not paying attention to your health and your well-being. So I, through my own personal journey, I mean, I am vegan now. I've completely transformed the what I eat. Um, I am more of a holistic wellness coach, um, total life transformation. So we look at your mind, your body, and your spirit and say, how can we pull you into a balance so that you live the life that you, of your design, of your making, so that you can be able to live this limited, abundant life that is waiting for you. 
to do. Yeah. And you're doing it. I mean, look at this. I mean, you're 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 on TV, you're traveling, you're out there sharing yeah. this with others here in the United States and then throughout the world. And you have that kind of a mindset, don't you? You have a message to share. I do. I mean, I have that mindset. So the first thing that it really starts with, because it starts with our shift in our mindset and our thinking and how we look at things, how we look at ourselves and the world around us. Because once we make that shift, so much more happens. So once you shift your mindset, once you shift your thinking, once you shift your perspective, now let's look at what are the barriers, the blocks, and the blind spots that's holding you back from achieving the things that you want to achieve. Because now your mind is more open. Now you're in a receptive mode to being able to receive exactly what you need so that you can move forward and become that which you desire to become and have the life of your making, of your design. Because we're the authors of our life. We I love that. And 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 uh, you've been having some people like you've been having uh, comments and Amy and Tina are in the house um, and uh, uh, the friend zone and they're sharing into the group. And, you know, they're saying uh, giving you a lots of love and and oh, thank I want you. to say thank you for being here, you guys. And and thank you, he, everyone. Yes, because, you know. The thing about you, the, your message, Angelique, that inspires me, it inspires me so much because when you believe that you can go out there and make a difference, our bodies and our minds and our souls, we need to, we need to be find that alignment within that message and it all needs flow right yeah exactly yeah. starting to get i think it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> and, and i know that you're at an event and we're gonna have to yes. wrap up here because they're gonna be starting here soon you've got some, let's talk about this what how can you people get a hold of you because you've got and you're gonna be launching an online course that sounds Absolutely amazing. It's 21 days to shift your mindset set, right? Yes. So it's a mini course and it's a foundation that is called 21 days to um, shift your mindset. And what it does, it just gives you some basic fundamental principles on shifting your mindset, some um, tips, some exercises to go through. Because a lot of times when I'm working with my clients, I'll ask them, write down who you think you are. Write down the description of yourself. Now write down what you would like to see in yourself and write down some other things. And what I pay attention to is their verbiage, how they describe themselves, you know, how they um, phrase certain things. So I look for certain words now to, and then that's when we start to go through that discovery because a lot of times we don't realize our own self-talk is keeping us out of alignment and is keeping us away from the things that we want to achieve. So I help them with that aspect. And then I may, I have, once we've discovered that, then they redo their self-description, their purpose in life, their intentions and things. And then we start to move forward from there. So it's, um, I'm very hands-on because I am passionate about helping to transform the lives of others because in, even throughout my corporate world, you know, whatever I've done in life, at the basis, fundamental aspect of what I've done and what I've achieved, it's always has been, how can I help you to be the best possible version of yourself? How right. can I help you love yourself so much yeah. that you love your life so much that you jump out of bed every morning and you're like, wow, this is my life. This is me. You know? Yeah, I do know because that's what, when I met you, that was what I got from you. I got oh. that from you. I was sitting there that morning when you came up and we were sitting right next to each other. And then we had other opportunities to do that bonding. And I actually yeah. have a picture of us and our little group 
uh, from the city summit, with one Yay. of the pictures that uh, was taken. And, you know, I just want to say this is that I know that you need to go and, and you also have a couple ebooks that are coming out that, that people can yes. be um, finding out about. Can you do us a favor? Can you go into the comment area and put uh -huh. how they can get a hold of you, how they can find out more about your 21 day uh, online course that you're launching and the ebooks? Because those are pretty spectacular. One, let's see, five tips to yoga and meditation, right? Yes, how like yoga meditation can help you to shift your mindset. And then the other one is there is no sky because I cannot stand that phrase. I hate the phrase, the sky is the limit. It's not the limit. That's that limiting mindset. So right. there is no sky. So it's 12 guiding principles to living your life limitless. Beautiful. You <laughs> are so amazing. Your story. Thank you. Is you are too. Oh, <laughs> I love and you, know, you. I love you too. I just absolutely do. Mwah, mwah. You know, because, and, and, and I just wanted your story to get out there because you are such an inspiration to me. And I know without a shadow of a doubt to so many others, because you have been there. You've done that on every single level. You've been up and you've been down. You've been up and you've been down and you've had so many different experiences yes. and you have been able to come through it and have now this beautiful amazing soul that you can help others to find their beautiful and amazing souls their life purpose through all of the different things that you have the ability to share with them Thank i know we need to, you're so welcome i i know we got to end this i would love to spend more time so but i'm I'm going to end it by doing, okay. sending it off right by saying we are closing day number 228 Yay. of 365 days of awesome. Celebrate success through service. I want to thank you, Angelique Jackson, for being the thank service you. hero that you are. You inspire. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. And thank you everyone who came on live. I appreciate everyone. I'll make sure that I put in the comments some of the other things and I'll show you guys some love. Uh, they're setting up now. Yes, so. yes. Tell everybody they're high for me too. I okay? will. Thank you so much. You're so awesome. I really enjoy. appreciate you. I appreciate you too. You enjoy. Okay. And thank I will see everybody guys. else tomorrow. You guys want to be here tomorrow. It is going to be spectacular. Amazing. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right. Bye.